take time to be holy. Speak off with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him, whatever be time. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord, and looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul, each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service above. Jesus name we pray our father we thank and bless your name that we have found favor in your side to know these things we are like the Israelites of those days that in a world of ignorance of divine ownership of divine power and creatorship the tribe of Israel happened to know God to walk with God to hear God speaking and to see the manifest presence of God in their midst in various ways to have the commandment of God given to them with all power, signs, and wonders. God, so is it also of us that in this moment, divine, in a world like this, we could find you we could walk with the living Jesus the one that died on the cross the one that resurrected and went back to heaven that we could be in a practical relationship with you and that your word has not died among us has not vanished from us thank you for this grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh God. Yet more we are looking for you. We want to tell people more about you. God be real to us. To them. To all. That come to your presence to seek you. We want them to know you. And touch you in their hearts. Thank you Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In our message, we are considering as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of Jesus be. As the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of Jesus be. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to 39. Matthew 24, 37. 
But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be I read that passage again but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be here jesus is confirming the event that happened in the days of noah jesus is saying here that what you have happened in the days of noah was true indeed there was a man called noah who lived at the time the world reached its peak in iniquity and corruption there was a man that lived at that time and this man was righteous this man was holy and conducted his family in the fear of god hey. what jesus was saying is there was a time righteousness and the fear of god reduced in the whole world to just a family that's what jesus wants you to know righteousness holiness all over the world reduced to just a family that's the report we are hearing it's important for you to know to know this to be awake to the fact that it has started again that righteousness holiness in the world has started reduction is coming down to the hands of very few it may come to rest only in a family oh lord holiness revival movement is that family yeah. that's our prayer that's our prayer it is going on it's going on but what was the message then the message of mercy that was going on was the lord would destroy the world with water so people should repent and come to the ark that god had instructed noah to build no remedy his patient over the world had finished he was to take 
judgmental action. But in case anybody would hear, he pointed to the ark under Noah's construction. Come up there. And for 120 years, Noah was in construction of the ark and preaching this gospel of righteousness and holiness. It's only, it's so it's so it, it, it so vanished from the earth that it could not be revived righteousness and holiness so vanished that even preaching could not revive it but it rested in a family it rested in a family the family of noah the days of Noah are here again with us. The world of humanity has reached its peak of corruption and wickedness. God's judgment is determined. God's judgment is determined over the political world. The commercial world and the religious world and now in our time the ark is in the building the lord is building the ark through his own people god is building the ark of safety for the remaining few who are interested in God and heaven. Humanity have removed their interest. It's this few that the Lord is building this ark for. That the Lord has raised up this ark for. The ark in the building for human salvation is the gospel of truth righteousness and holiness this is only the region of safety it is the region of safety no other no other place the people are adamant they are cynical and mocking. Eventually, only few shall be saved from the eternal destruction that is coming upon the world. And these few must enter into the ark. Enter into truth, righteousness, and holiness. This few, there's no other way but truth, righteousness, and holiness. This is the ark. If you hear holiness revival movement is the ark, is because of this. It's not just a name. Not a name. There's no other name that can come up more than Jesus' name. But because truth is here righteousness is here holiness is here and god has given attention to this place he has put his eyes here he has put his eyes here he has put his person here because of this truth righteousness and holiness not only propagated but practiced that's why this place is the interest of god in the world is the interest of god when the lord began to say these things i was wondering i was wondering at it i said how could we very few people be the interest of god i 
began to look at the big wild white world and I began to look at some great denominations great leaders is as I travel around the world I discover that listen listen let God be true and every man a liar I'm telling you there is no country in the present world that has the presence of God more than Nigeria there's no there's no they I said, I said wonderful God was true they I came to consider some of these our denominational churches big churches holiness churches I looked at them and saw their persecutions over holiness movement I saw their disdain we came up for fellowship they said no we don't want you they're exercising pride why did they reject the message of the Lord the God of the universe sent revelations of truth from heaven they rejected it I said let God be true let every man be a liar the presence of God is in this movement the acceptance of God is here King Hasuerus, Ahasuerus has stretched forth the staff of acceptance to Esther. And this movement is Esther, my brother. I'm telling you the truth. Because of righteousness, thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter thy throne thy throne O lord is forever and river everybody the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter thou lovest righteousness righteousness and yet test wickedness hallelujah therefore Lord thy God has anointed test thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows therefore lord thy god has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy Fellows, let others be provoked to jealousy and then let them come to the love of God, let them come to the righteousness of God, let them come to the truth of God, let them come to the holiness of God, let them stop their persecution and welcome people of truth and holiness. If actually they know holiness, if actually they understand the God of holiness, let them receive the message of end time holiness that God has sent to wake up the world. Let them receive it, then I will know they are really holy. Otherwise, they are wasting their time. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you, this is the moment the act of the Lord is going on righteousness holiness and truth take it number one the days of the coming of the lord number two the ongoing building of the ark and finally certainty of christ's return number one the days of the coming of the lord in first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 
First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. The days of the coming of the Lord are also called in the later times. Called the later times. The later times. And has the characteristic as specified here. Departing from the faith. Demons taking over the Christian church. Demons taking over the Christian ministry. Demons taking over the work of the Holy Ghost. From the, for in the church. Wow. The backsliding of the people. Turning away their ears from the truth. From the faith. And turning unto fables. Unto seducing spirits. And practically teaching the doctrines of devils. In 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 1. Verse 1 to verse 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. This life has characterized the church in our time. It is the last days the coming of christ is in the last days and we are in the last days and we are seeing men loving themselves running after the world material things for themselves the the, the love of god has was called they have a form of religion they don't have the power of salvation. The religion does not carry with it the power of salvation. Again, in the book of Luke, chapter 21. Luke, chapter 21. I read verse 34 to 36. The Bible tells us, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time, your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that day come upon you unawares for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man yes be careful because these things characterize the day of the coming of the lord the period of the coming of the lord it tells us people shall be given to themselves eating and drinking feasting following after the cares of this life and people shall be in ignorance they shall not be thinking towards the coming of Christ. And that day will catch them unawares. The days of the coming of Christ, which are the days we are living in, could also be called the last days. The later times. The end time. Apart from the turbulence and chaos that characterize this period in the world, there are specialized behaviors that should characterize the Christian church. 
the Christian church sum up together we could see the following number one ignorance ignorance of the coming of Christ ignorance many are not aware maybe including you that Jesus is returning many didn't even know he came so what about how much more of returning they're not aware the present world is not aware the government of the nations are not aware that the maker of the world part of which they govern is coming back they're not aware the businessmen are not aware that the creator of mankind is appearing in his timetable to take his own out of the living they are not aware they don't know they are not aware and many many people in the villages in towns and cities capital cities are not aware that Jesus is returning many churches are not aware many why they don't talk about it they don't tell them about it so they are not aware that Jesus is coming they are not aware that is what characterizes the present world like the days of Noah they were never aware some of them were even wondering how can the flood come I and mean, how can the flood come how can it which way forget those things that's how they're even saying now they're not aware but brother be aware be informed jesus is coming back say it say it say it take it and it is so and we are living in the days of his return we are living in the moment the world has reached its peak of iniquity if nothing is done god is now he, his mind has left the earth and he is now thinking of the sons his mind has left the ass. The ass is lost. But now, if the delay takes longer, he will even lose the people going about after the ark. If the Lord delays, even Christians shall be affected. Even believers, serious ones, shall be affected. Therefore, his eyes are turned back to his people. He knows that they must be gathered now. A time should no more be given. So, heaven is prepared. Heaven is prepared. The Lord is prepared. Angels are working hard. In a short time, you shall hear the trumpet if you are a Christian born again. Holy, righteous. The trumpet shall sound. We are so few that we will not even make much impression upon the earth. But we shall go. Amen. If he delays, even few of us, he will lose us. I'm telling you, by nature of the world and what is going on there, be informed. Jesus is coming back. Please, can you t talk to your neighbor? Tell him so. Let him wake up. Tell him yes please let him be informed be informed be informed don't sleep anymore don't be absent-minded anymore 
the Lord is coming. We are in the days of the coming of Jesus. Amen. Again, drunkenness, suffering, and cares of this life shall be seen in abundance. Brethren, check it yourself. How many care for the things of Jesus? Everybody is thinking of material possession and advancement in life. Even those who are working in the church are working for themselves. Because of the money they get there. They, they oh, I want to work. Is there any work for me to do? It's for his name. Not because he knows that Jesus is there. Not because he knows that Jesus is coming. That he will be righteous. Very few. The people have forgotten the cares of this life. They're struggling over there in Europe and America. They're struggling to pay rent, to pay bills. So all the time is spent on this, not to talk about Jesus coming back. Cares of this life. Cares of this life. Come over here. All effort is on children's school fees. Those who have got money want to build house. Want to do another business that will bring more money. Not to talk about Jesus coming back. Cares of this life. They are so busy. The church is spending time teaching people on success. How to make it up because everybody must make it. The world is tough. Satan has made it so. So, the mind of Christ is not there. Thinking about God, about righteousness. No, that's not what is in their hearts. The cares of this life and deceitfulness of riches that's what has taken over again bankruptcy i mean multiplication of iniquities and wickedness multiplication of iniquities and wickedness sin has abounded new sins manufactured who could have told you that the world will accept that man should marry man woman should marry woman who could have told you that the church of christ should vote for that that bishops should be marrying men who would have told you the wickedness has reached its peak wickedness has reached its peak and when it did so in Gomorrah and Sodom it was brought down and cleared out it's now for the world iniquity various kinds of sins and evil the thoughts of man are only evil continually only evil continually again bankruptcy of righteousness and holiness you won't find it difficult where where do you want find righteousness it has become precious it has become precious i am saying it diminished in the days of noah until he rested on just a family after the resurrection of jesus the church continued until it actually seemingly vanished out of the world it just rested on maybe one man or some few very very few darkness took over that's what brought about catholicism darkness took over absolutely and the same thing has, is happening now righteousness is deep, is disappearing from the hearts of men holiness no they don't want both church leaders elders and members are not interested in holiness they are not interested in righteousness it's, it's, there is bankruptcy there is scarcity of preachers of truth righteousness and holiness scarcity I was told of a country that these other preachers satanic ones satanic bishops and all 
took over preaching that when one preacher of truth came they, to say I want to preach in the radio I gave you my money now they gave him back his money and said you are causing confusion <laughs> you are causing confusion the bishops are the one to preach in the radio but I paid you money for all this. I've been preaching for all this period uh, but now no more take back all the money the one that remain take preachers of truth have become scars brother sister the world is going they have become scars where will you find them where will you find conference where you go and attend to hear the pure world perfect world and who how many people are interested to be there how many are interested to be there i'm told of some people that would have come here but that an organization from america said all the churches they are coming to supply them to build new churches for them and give money and give this one so they couldn't come they're waiting for them they're waiting for them satan has taken new styles of iniquity new stars he is literally buying up the church of christ literally the people are not bothering where the money is coming from it's not they're not bothering who are the people behind the sponsorship what is their belief what's their doctrine do they know jesus are they born again that's not what they're looking for they said they want to give us money they will build our churches for us churches are gone this is just the last walk of Satan over them. I'm telling you, preachers of righteousness have become scars. Yes, there is hardness of heart towards the gospel message. Hardness of heart. You preach, the people are not hearing. You preach and preach. All these teachings about hearing, remove your jewelry, change your cloth, dress nice, dress clean, dress righteous. They are not ready to hear you. They will not hear. You will find a woman in the church under such sound preaching. She will be looking at the preacher, but her heart is not there. She trained herself. The devil taught her how to do it. The way the preacher is preaching, look straight to his eyes. Be, let it, the two of you see eyeball to eyeball and start studying his eyes and be watching his lips you won't hear those things he's saying and that is how they are in the church now I'm telling you the church has reached the, the world has reached its peak they've had what else when a salt has lost its own has lost its own saltness what is it good, good for but to be trodden on the foot of me the people have had enough the people are not high hearing anymore the people are challenging this gospel truth they don't want it they are rejecting the preachers of truth they are persecuting them they don't want we don't want don't tell me I don't want to hear they have reached their peak like the days of Noah like the days of Noah. Again, number seven, scoffing and mockery at the gospel of righteousness and holiness. Oh, wives are suffering in the hands of their husbands. And some of these husbands are pastors. Because these women have accepted the gospel of holiness. And the husband said, choose between me and the gospel of holiness choose between me and the gospel of holiness either bring back your earring the trousers or pants you'll be using or else marriage will end and many of these women who have really not gotten a good foundation in christ whose eyes have not actually opened like a baby that was born but the eyes are still closed they give up my husband doesn't want it my husband says i should not follow i should not come 
they are frustrated wow hatred at the gospel of holiness but thank god for those women who know their who know their god the bible says and they that know their god shall be strong and shall do exploit you will choose between marriage and heaven your husband said you should choose between holiness and himself god also says choose between marriage and heaven amen yeah. go ahead the matter is all in your hand the matter is all in your hand so that's the situation the state of the world now arrangement is going on worldwide how to turn the world onto satan <laughs> now some other people have come up in america a group of people you will see them ride upon themselves i am going to hell and i am proud about it i'm telling you i'm proud about it i'm going to hell there are people that say can which way can i resemble satan can you make me resemble satan carry uh, put horns on me i think they say our master has horns Put it on my head some will would put some fearful i may mean, turn their teeth into something fearful to look like evil spirits they vote for satan so they have gone now the ongoing building of the ark look at it in genesis chapter 6 verse 11 Genesis chapter 6 verse 11 to 14 the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence and God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth and God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark. And shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shall thou make to the ark, and a cubit shall thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shall thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the earth, thou and thy sons, and thy wife and thy son's wives with thee that's what god says the end of human beings have come the end of all flesh has come man the matter is over the lord is rounding up matters now woman the game is over god is rounding it up now the issue of the church serving god is over in a short while if the ark is already here for those to come in for a specific time everything shall be shut the rest destruction judgment of fire it's not it's not uh, it's not water anymore 
the race shall be for destruction the events shall, that shall roll on from after the lord has taken his people the events shall roll on roll on in the judgment of humanity and shall eventually end up in extermination and damnation in hell that's it damnation in hell the end of all things has come the rapture we have been talking about is about blowing down the end of all this thing labor we have been laboring will soon come up will soon appear that's what the lord says man has corrupted himself man has reached his peak in wickedness the question i would have loved man to answer how do you feel a creator the creator great and majesty formed you you don't want him you will not obey him the god come have you valued the son and know he who formed it you despise him have you looked into the body of water the ocean and imagine he who created it you're despising that person have you imagined the one that formed the nations of the world are you despising him have you thought about the the, the planets the size of the planets the majorless world what about the sound the wave the waves in the air what about light what about the mysteries of crea creation you do you disdain that god <laughs> he was the time to wipe you up has come wipe you away meaningless creatures stubborn ones stubborn people he made you for his glory you reject it you reject him and say you prefer satan and say they should put horns on your head and be saying cut this human being hey i am going to hell and i'm i bust of it just to abuse god what's wrong with you what happened to your mind what happened what made you to pitch your tent with satan that you are in occultism fighting the cause of christ they said they sent you to ruin holiness movement that's why you're here are you in your sense what's happening to you you're only causing confusion in the church the church is for jesus the creator of your life you are just just for confusion man uh -uh. what's wrong with you how long do we plead for him how long do you plead for man the lord told uh, uh, jeremiah don't plead for these people anymore don't plead for these people anymore i will wipe them out of jerusalem i get them clean out the end of all things has come comfort to you few who stand in righteousness they oppress you they despise you you cry be comforted your god is coming your lord is coming the creator of your life that knows what you need the pleasures you need the comfort you need the satisfaction you need he said he is coming woman we are happy with you your husband has not been able to change you 
and God also has not removed you from that house yet because he cannot remove you without God except God doesn't want you to be there all those things he's doing is nothing he will finish and just be watching you like this with wonder but thank God for what you're suffering I, we are happy we are proud of you proud of you to have you bearing these things demons entered into the church and corrupted it through you demons took over Adam through you demons scattered the world God made through you but now you have realized yourself and you are cleaning away Satan from your life all those property of the devil the earrings the attachment the beads you wear on your neck and on your hands are demonic now your eyes open all those pants trousers you're using you know some call it pants some call it trousers you are get you have gotten rid of them you are clean and righteous the devil cannot land on you anymore and he has not gone to hold your husband to pull you back he said devil you are a liar join this woman to say devil you are a liar he's, he's telling you it's your husband it's not the husband it's the devil but he's a liar he will not succeed through your husband through your child through the church through the community they are wasting their time i said they are wasting their time we are happy with you stand it god says he is coming the rapture shall soon take you two shall be in that house one shall be taken and you will be the one to be taken yeah. except he repents except he comes back he comes to jesus in truth so that's what we are telling you amidst forgetfulness of god ungodliness and wickedness prevalent in the days of noah the ark was being built the gospel of righteousness and holiness was being preached by noah both to his household and to the rest of the people the ark in noah's time physical subject and um, physical subject object yes yet he also preached the word of righteousness and holiness. For Noah was the preacher of righteousness. Actually, that was a spiritual act. Because you must first enter into it before the physical. Yes. Today, amidst the darkness in the world, and in the church, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is preached in its truth and totality. Yes, the gospel cardinals are being pointed out as written in scriptures. That is the act. The truth, righteousness and holiness is the act. The act is not a preacher. Is the truth, the word of God. Righteousness of God. The holiness of God. The ark is not a denomination. No. It is the word of God. The word of truth. Righteousness and holiness. The ark is not a Christian body. Per se. No. It is the word of truth righteousness and holiness this world is the ark but then what makes puts the ark in a place and people point to it is because there righteousness is preached truth is preached holiness is practiced then you point there that that is that place is the ark that can save man from the destruction to come full gospel is preached here we have brought you to full gospel get it again it just in summary repentance from sin 
and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the gospel of truth in Acts of Apostles chapter 20 verse 17. The Bible says and from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of, of the church and when they were come to him he said unto them ye know from the first day that I came into Asia after what manner I have, I have been with you at all seasons serving the Lord with all humility of mind we are not proud people we may speak of what God is doing here but we are not speaking in spirit of pride serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but I've shot you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks everybody let's continue repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ this is the foundation of Christianity repentance repent ye stop your sins now why because of God not because it's troubling you it's bringing not because there's sickness that is following not because you're fearing a particular sick no but because of God because you have heard the word of God stop your sins you can stop them and you have to stop them otherwise you're not a Christian if you're committing sin here you're not a Christian you have not stopped your sins the one makes you feel you're a Christian you are not repent because you fear God they faith towards our Lord Jesus by whom your sins of the past shall be forgiven by whom you will receive the power not to commit sin anymore by whom you will be preserved in righteousness until that day faith in the Lord Jesus not in your ability not in a church not in a man of God not in anything in a system but in the Lord Jesus I'm saying this because some of you will run in here and, and be saying <laughs> you are a Christian. I met with somebody. I, I said, he told me he was living around this environment. I said, oh, is that so? Because he called me. I said, are you Pastor Paul Rica? I said, yes. I am. By the grace of God. Uh, you know me. He said, I, I live in Kuali. Oh, you live in Kuali? We are having ministers oh you are a christian we are having ministers conference in Kuali. i invite you there he said i am deep alive what do you mean by that what do you mean what language is that what spirit are you using does deeper life save anybody that's how you will run in here under a name and perish the lord will not know you because you are not putting on it i'm a member of holiness movement that's not what I'm saying. Repentance towards God and faith towards who? You need to shout that name to, to deliver these people. I said faith towards who? Jesus. Shout that name again. Jesus. Shout that name again. Jesus. That is how you can be saved. Get him for yourself look to him that's the gospel we preach here that's the gospel not denomination not name of denomination not name of, of a leader over the denomination it doesn't say for there's no name given under heaven among men whereby we may be saved again sanctification of heart and holiness of life i'm telling you what we preach ephesians chapter 5 Verse 
Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 to 27 the Bible tells us here saying husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish sanctification Christ died for sinners and when they believe they become members of the church they Christ died for the church for sanctification of the church to make them holy and without blemish we say just as you wash your dirty cloth in water and in detergent to cleanse it after initial washing there is a second washing is that so what do you call that rinsing you need rinsing to be thoroughly clean however you wash your cloth in the first washing it must be rinsed thank God for your salvation you still need the second separate visitation of God separate work of God in your life called sanctification is coming up tomorrow I'll handle it fully there amen, amen. what is this for for your purity and holiness spotlessness to give you a pure heart promote you promote you into this unblemished holiness this you needed although you scarcely hear it you have never even heard they don't even say it it's not part of your gospel but it's part of this that's why i say something different is here the truth again baptism and gifts of the holy spirit in acts of apostles chapter one acts of apostles chapter one i read verse eight but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth ye shall receive power holy ghost power is for service for witness for the righteous life you have the spirit of god already in you for if any man has not the spirit of christ is none of his but for power extra power for the disciples had some initial power they could cast out devils they could heal they could preach but the lord still promised them power with a definite visitation of the holy spirit in their lives called baptism with the holy spirit evidence by speaking in tongues and we preach also the gifts of the holy spirit the gifts he gives to us for ministry manifestation of the spirit of god the word of wisdom word of knowledge faith prophecy gifts of healing miracle designing of spirits tongues and interpretation of tongues will tell that again as when the time comes during this conference this is required we preach in fact after conversion following it immediately is water baptism matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and 20 matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, 
even unto the end of the world and let us say amen this command was given by jesus the holy ghost came down 40 days after the resurrection of jesus pentecost he didn't change this command jesus said he shall testify of me he shall receive from me and give to you holy ghost didn't change this command what was the command baptizing them in the name of the father of the son and of the holy ghost showing that the godhead is three son and the father son and holy spirit both three are one person and both as individual persons and they are involved each one of them in the conversion of a soul they are involved you are handing the soul over to three separate personalities in the godhead but actually one person baptize him hand him over to the father to the son and to the holy ghost baptizing him in the name of the father and in the acts of apostles of course there were many baptisms even as someone said even the muslims they baptize their converts is that so there's something to do to the converts is that exactly so in those days it was said the, the pharisees also do evangelism to win converts to to judaism as the bible says woe unto you you try, try, you go from place to place looking for converts just to make them twice the sons of hell they were also making converts and they were baptizing their converts john also was baptized was baptizing people rather unto what baptism i mean have you received the holy ghost since yet believe no we have not even have, have have had whether there be any holy ghost unto what baptism then were you baptized unto the baptism of john the baptism of john was going on there but that was not an acceptable baptism after the date of christ john baptized indeed with water pointing to him that is to come so when they had this they, they, they were baptized what in the name of jesus they received the baptism instructed by jesus which is in the name of the father of the son and of the holy ghost because that commandment has not changed god gave that commandment under great inspiration he said the holy ghost will not come and change it it was freshly given in fact this commandment was given after resurrection so what who, who changed it who has power to change it who was instructed to change it not the holy ghost it's confusion of teachers that would still want to bring blemish on people and this baptism is by immersion baptized that word itself means submit submerge going into the body of water john baptized with water in jordan in the river he didn't carry water and pour on the head go inside it because it means being buried with christ we resurrect with him into a newness of life and jesus baptized in the place because there was much water there it is immersion that's the baptism water baptism that's what we preach then restitution restitution in the book of ezekiel chapter 33 verse 14 to 16 ezekiel 33 verse 16 14 to 16 the bible says again when i say unto the wicked thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right if the wicked restore the pledge give again that he hath robbed work in the statutes of life without committing iniquity he shall surely live he shall not die none of his sins that he had committed shall be mentioned unto him he had done that which is lawful and right he shall surely live the government of the nation not being christian not being religious practice and uphold restitution even among the hidden all those that embezzled the money of the government they announced to them 
Bring back the money before we come. Bring back the money before we come. If we come and catch you because we're following record, it will be worse with you. Are they bringing it? I said, are they bringing it? Restitution. How much more the church with which is the ground and pillar of the truth how much more should you do even more i say unto you except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees you shall by no means enter the kingdom if the world is doing this restitution that which they did badly they restore it they make restitution they amend it because they fear judgment you will not do restitution you have taken over your brother's wife you have taken over another person's wife you have taken over another person's husband you will not do restitution you will not escape the judgment of god you have gone to steal money from someone you will not do restitution the lord says if i say unto the wicked thou shalt die and if you will go if he he stops his sin and gets born again that's beautiful but go and restore those things don't just stand unborn again alone some of you they told you that if any man is born again he's a new creature all things are passed away what about your name do we call you by the first name or you have a born again name that happens immediately you have you gave your life to jesus why should you not reason well on scriptures that things that need rectification must be rectified it must be return those things certificates false documents all those lies you have told 20 years ago go and uncover those lies they're still doing the damage they're still doing the damage go and uncover them oh but you stole something you went to court and you took a lawyer and the lawyer spoke very wonderfully and the court said ah oh, innocent man like you we discharge you declared you are discharged and you are acquitted god didn't discharge you go back and say i only spoke intelligently but i'm a sinner that tells you how intelligent a sinner is but that you have come back to rectify the past restore those things. even if you suffered imprisonment is that hell you have come out of the prison don't say i will eat it now don't eat it it's not yours go back again and restore it that's the teaching that is how to bless the gospel of christ and adorn the church and promote god in the world and defeat the cause of satan and break the power of satan from the society of men and bring many to christ and protect yourself from the judgment to come restitution we preach it we teach it in every field every area we teach it we preach it yes you who are in witchcraft you repented nothing short that you were in witchcraft all those properties of witchcraft you hide it you repented secretly you will never continue in the faith you will not why wow you hit the devil he that hided the devil shall not prosper can you say it say it again he by he that confessed satan and forsakes him shall have mercy say it you who hide satan you will never prosper in your christianity and the word says so confess out that demon you in god involved in wickedness and the lord has delivered you see the authorities righteous people not not another sinner satan must not confess to satan you i'm sure you are aware of this get the righteous and unveil your case that more attention of prayer should be given that when satan comes back you you have told somebody else you somebody now will be of help to you and whatever a man sows, he shall reap hide him he is coming back he will come back with greater force and god who knows that you didn't follow his word will release his hand you go back again to his to sin and satan and it will be worse with you you'll be enrolled as an agent of darkness to fight the church so that you can be doomed properly confess confess and show your deeds we shall talk about this more 
I'm talking about the teaching we give. Yes, Christian giving, tithes and offering, giving to the poor, giving to provoke Christian law, giving for the gospel propagation, tithes and offering. We teach it that it is present. It is a thing to be done now. It's not past. Some people say, ah, no, the payment of tithes has gone. We say, no, it's a lie. Christ is after the pattern of Melchizedek, a high priest. Melchizedek collected, offering, collected tithes from Abraham. Did he? The second Melchizedek, which is Jesus Christ, ever lived to collect tithes from us. He's our high priest. He is our high priest. And the work of the high priest is to collect tithes. Is Jesus your high priest? Yes. Then you pay tithes to him. He is God, is God who commanded it. As long as there is the priesthood, there must be the payment of tithes. As long as there is a priesthood, there must be the payment of tithes. When there was a priesthood in Melchizedek, Abraham paid tithes to him. When there was priesthood among the children of Israel, all of them paid tithes to the priest. And in our day, there is a priest who will call his name. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. We must pay tithes to him. We must. Not to do is to despise his priesthood. And he that despises shall be cursed. He that despises shall be cursed. Because even those who despise ordinary men were cursed. How much more those that despise the priesthood of the God of heaven? The priesthood of the Son of God. How much more doubly cursed that you're not paying your tithe? We teach, pay tithes, one tenth of your offering. Where do you pay it to? Don't pay to the enemies of Jesus to promote them to fight the church. Pay to godly assemblies. Pay to righteous people, churches, organizations that will use it well in the name of the Lord. Where you too can get the blessing. If you see any man come now that comes to you not bringing this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Neither wish him God's speed. He that wishes him God's speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. You're paying money to all these uh, people carrying charms and talisman about in the name of ministry. You are a, you are evil person yourself, encouraging evil in the world. And you are here. You will not pay tithes to us. You people who go to tell these people that they should not pay tithes in the holiness movement, you are wicked. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are what? Yes. You are what? Yes. Say it the third time. Yes. What we said is let God lead you where you pay your tithes. But make sure you pay it in righteous place. If it leads you to pay it in the church where you're worshiping, do. If it leads you to pay it in holiness movement, do. As long as you see that we're worshiping God in truth, for all of us, whether the church you're worshiping or holiness movement, receive our money from God. Where well, our eyes are not on you, but on God. If you obey God, we shall have our food to eat. We shall have money to do the work of God. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing? Yes. All human principles and policies that will tie you down from obeying the word of God should be overlooked. All human principles and policies. There are some people who say if you don't pay your tithe, we will curse you. Do they have power to do that? That is even the language to show that you must never pay tithe in that place. You must not because an evil man the Bible says we should bless and curse not, but that one is cursing. Amen? Amen. We preach evangelism for soul winning. Preach the gospel. Go out after souls, after sinners. 
Yesterday I've told you clearly, ministry is soul willing. The progress of your ministry, prosperity in your ministry can be determined by how many people you bring to Christ in righteousness and holiness and are preserved in him. Go and preach. Go, preach the gospel. Preach to church members. Don't say they have all gone to, they are all in the church. All in the church. How many are born again? How many know Jesus? How many know the truth? How many are walking in his way? Preach to everybody God sends to you. If you meet with some pastors, preach to them. Is that clear? Yes, Even if the pastor says, oh, I'm a born again child of God. Oh, is that so? But let's face another area now. Since you have known Jesus, but there are other areas, let us face it. Hallelujah. Yes. That is how you will serve many people. You bring many people to Christ. Scriptural healing deliverance and blessings in christ scripture we preach that jesus, the word of god heals the name of jesus heals the holy ghost the power of the holy ghost brings healing to people yes but all the use of substances that have come to become doctrine in the church of Christ. We, we preach against them as idol worship. The matter of handkerchief and apron was mentioned only on Paul the apostle. No other minister in all the early, early church, none, used handkerchief and apron to heal anybody. None. Not even Barnabas that was working with Paul. Not Timothy that I would say inherit the, inherited the ministry of Paul. Nobody, not any of the apostles, used handkerchief and apron. But today, Satan has brought up handkerchief and apron. And the fate of people have gone to it. We say none of them shall go to heaven. If you're here using handkerchief and apron, for your information, your name is not in the book of life. I'm telling you, if you're a pastor ministering with handkerchief and apron, your name is not in the book of life. You have turned the people's faith from Jesus to material substance. Did handkerchief die for you? Did apron die for you? Can they produce the blood of purification? Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And only one person shed his blood for the remission of sins. Call me his name. Jesus. Call me his name. Jesus. Call me his name. Jesus. That is it. That's what we preach here. That's what we preach here. Coordinators, are you having handkerchiefs there? In the apron with you. Oh, you're not using them. Shout that no, let them hear. No, I know I say shout no to Anka Jim and Apron, let them hear. Does the Lord do signs and wonders here? Yes. By faith. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name. Simple. He sent forth his word and the word healed the sick and delivered them from destruction. That's what we preach. All these other things you're doing that you're doing on your own, God doesn't know you. Finish and go to hell. God doesn't know you. The use of anointing oil is restricted only on matters of healing. Even that is not even in rampant use because it's not all healing that requires it. Not all the time that you might even use it. Is anyone sick among you? Let him call for the elders. And let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Stop there. Has he been healed? When you anointed him with oil, has he been healed? But the oil they gave you has healing power inside it. They just tell you drink. Pour in your soup. Rub on your face. Rub at rope at the back put it in your pocket when you're going for interview 
before they call your name to enter in drop it in your tongue witchcraft witchcraft i told you in the day of noah righteousness diminished to a family set the same satan but me incorporated with him because he, that satan have almighty power if god the creator of man puts man at at will and has no power to break it has he given satan that power you gave him your, yourself you gave satan yourself anointing him with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer of faith and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick it is prayer of faith pray it in the name of jesus that heal the sick what about this anointing with oil maybe just to minister comfort to him as you're rubbing him like this the man is feeling happy that he's loved and that builds up his faith for healing but it's not everybody that needs it it's not all the time much healing goes on without that in all Paul's healing, anointing with oil was not found. In all Peter's healing, healing ministry, anointing with oil was not found. Many ministers of God, including myself, we do perform miracles and healing in Christ's name. I have never anointed with oil once. I will not stop you from doing so if you can be restrictive according to scripture. If scripture allows you, why must I condemn you? But it must be restrictive. And it is on sickness not on anointing ministers uh, okay this is time to anoint ministers with what holy ghost is there for ministers it's not oil holy ghost they anointed these ministers and corrupted them demon took over do you know what is inside that anointing oil satan is has blinded you they pour it upon you and remove the original grace god gave you you are operating under a strange power and you do strange things in the church of christ because you are submissive into strange doctrines did jesus anoint his apostles with oil did paul anoint timothy with oil why are you allowing yourself to be anointed with oil and say it's for ministry why are you anointing people with oil and you say it's for ministry corruption corruption evil weakening the people allowing satan into them and they bring out many testimonies hey, in fact that oil you know our our bishop told us our general overseer he told us that he prayed over the anointing oil for us so he told us that anything we can use anointing oil for it so i a cat was disturbing me in my house a cat was disturbing was making noise yeah, yeah, like a human being they are witches and wizards i came out and began to pour anointing oil around my house the following day seven cats died is that not a testimony i'll be here <laughs> satan has given you a sign that you have connected well i'm telling you you have connected well they're preaching false power to you you are using it damning the gospel of christ and the presence of god is no more there because you are offering strange fires that's it healing miracles in truth don't push anybody down don't say until you pray somebody falls down he has not received power it's a deceit it's a deceit when they i invited people here yesterday those who wanted to recommit themselves to christ when they were going the lady sat down she thought i would be thinking he's under anointing which anointing they said okay go she doesn't leave, leave me alone i say carry her off from that place <laughs> she went over there and she was doing like this i was looking for whom do i send to go and arrest that problem there You do fake things like that and you think that is is of God. Who, you can't deceive people here. <laughs> Who said you must fall down? If you fall down, you have a demon. 
once somebody falls down like they carry him and go and interview him whether maybe he didn't eat with some because they didn't eat actually <laughs> <laughs> praise the lord that's what you need to understand serving god according to biblical standard biblical standard you're running to serve god your family is half hazard you're not even bothering you're not even caring all is to go and open ministry have you controlled your family? He that cannot rule his family well, how can he rule the church of God? Stand out. That's how ministry multiply without life. Now, the people that would have gone to the real assemblies are divided into five, ten, under Bachard, under some houses, some various places. No Christianity no christianity they have done vanish because the ministers are not people following standard they are not ruled by god's word they are not the women that are showing zeal go and look at their dressing women that are showing zeal that the leaders go and see their dressing can the holy ghost be taking this type of people to confuse the gospel and the truth the Lord told me, and yet that language, hey, Jesus. In fact, Jesus came to me this morning. The Lord told me. Everybody is saying that the Lord said he will take him around the world. Are you one of them? Everybody is saying it. Jesus told me he will be taking me around the world. The Lord told me. The Lord told me. The Lord, in fact, the Lord called me. The Lord called me. You have made us to feel that this word, Lord, is not only referring to Jesus. Satan, too. Are you hearing me? This the Lord told me. The Lord called me. I, I saw in a dream today the Lord. That, that Lord is not necessarily Jesus. Satan too. That's what you have shown. Because Jesus must speak according to the word. To the testimony. Yes. The Bible tells us. He must speak according to the word of God. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. There is no light in them that your jesus that gave you a commandment outside scripture is not it's not it's not the son of god that's why you're reigning ministries reigning people instead of humbling to join others to do this work the lord has called me to get out satan two are better than one satan wants to break that law to scatter the people so that you cannot be united to do the work of God. You're always seeing the vision of your ministry. Vision of your ministry. is not all from Jesus. We've preached damnation of hell. Damnation of hell. If you refuse, you shall be damned. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. That's what we preach. Hell has enlarged herself because of stubbornness. People who have refused to submit themselves to the spirit of truth. They are full of themselves. The love of God has was called. We preach heaven and eternity with God in my father's house. There are, many, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. We preach the rapture of believers soonest. It's the next thing that will happen now. It's the next thing that will happen. That's why when eh, America said they're bringing American chip, it doesn't mean anything to us now because it is not 666. The word of God says 666 will come after the church has been raptured is these people with false doctrine who say there will be tribulation before the rapture they are the ones having that problem otherwise to us he that is letting will late until he's taken out of the way before the man of sin shall appear we have been taken out of the way 
before the flood came upon the world no one had entered into the ark before the fires fell upon Sodom and Gomorrah Lord had come out of it we shall come out before the Antichrist shall show up that's the immediate thing we're waiting for now the rapture it can be today in fact actually, that's what the Lord brought you to prepare you for If you hear this thing, this quarreling, though God is quarreling you, if you can hear this quarrel and say, God, I'm sorry, and repair yourself, you are going in the rapture. Yes, we preach eternal rewards for the righteous. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth is led for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Not only to me, but to them that love his appearing. Righteousness, crowns, are awaiting you. I round up now. Certainty of Christ's return. In Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, and the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. For thee, for thee, the righteous enter into the ark. Righteousness delivered from death. I have seen you righteous in this generation. Verse 6. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And verse 7. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Verse 10. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the, wi the windows of heaven were opened and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Every human flesh wiped out. They thought God was joking. They thought God was joking. In the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. I read verse 13 to verse 18. But I would, have, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18, everybody. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The Lord is coming. You are going to hear in this conference revelation. The Lord has given about his coming amen yeah. i'm telling you this thing is reality this thing is reality it's happening in our time the trumpet shall soon blow make sure you are in the ark truth righteousness holiness it's becoming a family business. Be in the family. 
be in the family of truth righteousness and holiness for the lord is coming to judge the ungodly world in jude verse 14 to 16 jude verse 14 to 16 the bible says and enoch also the servant from adam prophesied of this saying behold the lord coming with ten thousands of his sons to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him these are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaking great swelling words having means persons in admiration because of advantage the lord is coming with judgment all these people have hardened themselves against the truth hardened themselves against righteousness the lord is coming judgment shall descend the lord shall clear them man says he doesn't he doesn't fear hell man is saying he's even busting about it let him go there and bust the bible said does not believe that there is god even the devils believe and, 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 and tremble but man man says he is happy to go to hell satan trembles over hell man said man said the lord is coming let he that says he wait for him let him that is ready wait for him our god is coming judgment will overtake you he would deal with this ungodly world he created a wall and they, for, and, and they forgot him he brought somebody to lie a man sponsored a man to the to the university and brought him up spent all his resources on that man he came out of the university and forgot him he got into job and was making money and forgot him you forgot your god he's coming for you he's coming for you judgment judgment let the lord come in the second coming is judgment that will take place you will know it you will know it everything will be made clear we shall tell you the the systematic events of the end time i think it's today you hear that that will be done yes church righteousness has left the earth it has diminished greatly in the days of noah it diminished to a family yes in the dark ages it diminished it, it, it almost vanished it the story was not really clear only a remnant were preserved in our day the lord would not allow total dimin, total disappearance of righteousness a body has been raised up we shall stand to this until the rapture yeah. as many as are ready for the rapture let's go together yeah. take these teachings they are the ark of noah for your salvation for your preservation for your eternal living rise up upon your feet and worship the lord you here for himself the Lord has brought you here for himself he wants you to be in the ark for safety Know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Know the truth. Practice it. Thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom. 
is a right scepter. Thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, Lord thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy failures. Therefore, Lord thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy failures. Thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter thy throne the Lord, is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter thou lovest righteousness righteousness and yet taste wickedness. Therefore, Lord thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy failures. Therefore, Lord thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy failures. Therefore, Lord. God has anointed thee with that oil of gladness above thy failures. Therefore, Lord, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy failures. Therefore, Lord, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. 
For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe
came from heaven You died for my sins You purchased me with your blood You are my Lord and my Savior And for my sins Oh Lord Jesus You are the living Savior Jesus I believe in you I believe in you Cause you are my Lord and Savior You are my Lord and Savior Jesus I believe in you I believe I believe in you, you are the living Savior. Savior. Jesus, I